York Regional Police uh, started doing what a few other police services in Canada do, which is to post the names of people who have been charged with driving while impaired. Uh, the uh, practice can be called naming and shaming. Uh, and uh, it's done by a minority of police forces. Uh, it's supported by Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And when York uh, Regional Police did it, it uh, resulted in some uh, public debate and a lot of thumbs up. Our legal system has investigators, uh, prosecutors, judges, and juries, and parliament. And that's how the criminal legal system works. And uh, the police investigate and charge people. Prosecutors uh, take the evidence and decide whether or not to prosecute people. And then the judge and jury um, implements the law passed by parliament, firstly to determine if the person is uh, guilty and uh, conviction is entered. And then uh, they deal with the issue of punishment and sentencing. The problem with what York uh, Regional Police is doing is they are taking on the role of judge and jury. They say trying to deter people uh, from drinking and driving. The problem is that's um, to, to name and shame someone uh, violates the presumption of innocence, uh, has the police playing the role of uh, investigator, charger, judge and jury. Uh, it assumes that it will, in fact, deter people when there's no evidence of general deterrence arising from naming and shaming people. Lastly, um, it uh, really is like a medieval practice, this uh, public shaming of people. It's, it's like the pillory, uh, the medieval pillories. Uh, so it's also a, an inappropriate form of punishment, and it's all those things. Nobody is going to have any sympathy for anybody who has been charged before unless uh, it's someone that they know and care about. And then they find out what it's like to be charged. In the event that uh, the individual is innocent or guilty, they are operating uh, in a state of fear. Uh, now you can say they deserve that fear. The problem is, is if they're operating in a state of fear, they may make a bad decision. And in particular, what the Canadian Civil Liberties Association would worry about is if they want to get their name out of a story as quickly as possible and avoid having a trial, they may plead guilty. And they may plead guilty in circumstances where they're innocent. Premature uh, guilty pleas uh, are never in the interest of the defendant. But worse than that, sometimes uh, a guilty plea that's entered into in fear can result in a miscarriage of justice, where an innocent person is pleading guilty, basically under duress and under the pressure of having their name up on the website. I mean, it violates their right to a fair trial. It takes away their presumption of innocence. Uh, uh, the bigger concern for me is that the police are, think that they can play a role that they legally don't have, that they constitutionally don't have. And so it means police are engaging in an inappropriate power grab and uh, it's necessary for police boards, legislatures, um, uh, mayors, uh, people who are accountable for the police to tell them to stop doing it because it's an unconstitutional practice. If you're presumed innocent, then you're innocent. And if you're innocent, you shouldn't get fired for something that um, hasn't been proven. Now you might say to yourself, wait a minute, how exactly does somebody get charged with drinking and driving if they're innocent? Uh, well, firstly, sometimes the technology does fail. There are cases which go to trial where it turns out the machine got it wrong. Sometimes you get a toxicology expert who shows up and says, actually, that person wasn't intoxicated. Sometimes the charge is laid because the person didn't blow uh, or didn't participate in the breath sample. Why? They didn't understand what their rights were. They didn't understand the consequences. Uh, they weren't informed of the consequences of refusing. Maybe there was a language gap and they didn't understand what was going on, or maybe their um, state of mind was such that they just couldn't comprehend what was going on. In all those maybe small set of circumstances, uh, you've got some people who are up on a website presumed guilty who are in fact presumed innocent. And the problem here is this. Our legal system is not built to get as many guilty people as possible into jail. That's not how it's built. Our legal system is built to avoid having anybody innocent 
treated as if they're guilty. That's the way our system is built. And this is the opposite of that. So if you uh, agree that, uh, you know, we need uh, clear boundaries between what the police can do and what judges and juries can do, well, we need your support. Uh, this is what Canadian Civil Liberties does. Click on the link, uh, join uh, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. If you're interested in your rights and your freedoms, then uh, come. We need you.